Welcome back to Rebel Femme Podcast. We've had a lot of changes in the salon, a lot of drastic changes in the salon over the last four months, five months, maybe, depending on when this episode comes out, uh, maybe six months. <laughs> that might be longer. <laughs> and a lot of our clients want to know what the hell and what's up and and all of that stuff and I feel like we've been really professional this whole time yes and not speaking about it publicly or even with our clients yes there's been good and bad changes and a lot of them are for the better most of them are. <laughs> majority of them are yeah for the best and I think we just kind of owe it to our clients and we thought this would be the perfect platform to go ahead and kind of discuss a little bit of those changes and why they happened and what occurred and just kind of go from there and we're just going to have a candid conversation Yadira and I about all of those changes and yeah I'll just kind of leave it at that and we'll just get right into this you are now listening to Rebel Femme Podcast. An honest conversation about hair, life, and everything super random. <laughs> Every time I hear that first part, I'm like, oh, that's you. That sounds, you don't sound the same. I don't? No. How do I sound? I don't know. It doesn't sound the same. Do I sound like so deep like this? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> Maybe we gotta redo it. Yeah, we do. It's time. I don't know. You kick it off, you Dara. I'm the salon owner. I'm the evil bitch. So let's just go into it. Well, I'm no better because apparently I'm cold and unapproachable. Um. <laughs> Where's the... <laughs> so we just wanted to give clarity to all of our clients who have been asking, but we want to remain professional at the same time. So no names will be named. Nope. We'll just talk about a few of the things. Yes. Yeah. And 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 part of that too is I don't really feel like I mean this is this is the the bitchy side of me here, but I don't really feel like their names deserve any form of real estate either on this podcast. So they will sh and shall remain nameless as we <laughs> go through this. <laughs> so I think um, one of the biggest issues is that we had some people in management that probably should not have been in management from the get-go. Yeah, so that's I think that's just kind of what the got the wheel turning of the, of the changes. And so for those of you that are new to our podcast and new to our salon and probably don't know about like anything that's happened change-wise, that's congratulations. You were avoided a lot of that shit a storm, but essentially we lost half of our staff um in our salon and that's what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah. I think it was more than half, but <laughs> yeah, more than half. Um, but no, about half because how many, are, there's seven of us here now. Yeah. Yeah. And then we had like 16 or 18 people. So yeah, yeah relatively yeah. anyway, yeah. give or yeah. take. <laughs> and what, what were you saying? Now I forgot management management. So yeah, I think that's just kind of what got the wheel turning um, as salon owner and salon manager here. Cause that's what Udira's role is. Um, we had, you know, different, levels of management throughout everyone kind of got to oversee different things because of the pandemic we grew exponentially like we grew so fast it just we grew too fast and we couldn't like keep up with the growth yeah. to be completely honest um for some backstory here we started this salon with just three people and three little literally three people yeah. and one of those three people was pregnant which was me hi <laughs> Um, hi. um, so we started the salon with just three people and, uh, as we've grown and through the pandemic, you know, we survived those three closures, even over the pandemic, we lost some people cause we, we grew before that. I think we had like, maybe there was like 12 of us at that point. Yeah. Yeah, there was. And then we lost a couple cause you know, some people moved or, um, wanted to open up their own private suite to kind of contain the virus type of shit. It was just like a big shuffle. It was just like a big shuffle. Yeah, really big shuffle as a lot of salons experienced and a lot of them also, you know, either closed down, downsized. I mean, you know, people like moved. I mean, you name it. It was just like, but we survived. We survived through those three closures and um, a lot of growth has happened because of that. Um, and I think, too, you know, when you do have something a big event like the pandemic and salons and businesses were closing and people were moving. Um, and then we also had beauty schools that were shut down. Yeah. So we didn't have like enough new talent to Coming come on in, board. Yeah. So it was just like so many things just shifted, but we grew our clientele. Like clients were like pouring in here 
and we didn't have enough bodies to take them. Yeah, because their own stylists were either moved away or not taking clients anymore. Yeah. So I think in doing so or what, that happening, um, you know, thankfully we, we grew our team, but like I said, we, I think we grew so fast and we just kind of put people in positions and places where it just kind of didn't make sense yeah. long term, but they needed to happen. And, and unfortunately this was a great learning lesson for both of us. Um, and what has <laughs> happened. Oh, for sure. Um, so that's just kind of like how and why I say that it's not necessarily to like say negatively about somebody. It was just kind of like the way it happened, I guess. Yeah. Um, it happened because, because it needed to. It happened because it needed to. And I think ultimately the the blame and the fault kind of lies on me. Right. Because I'm putting people in positions where they shouldn't have been put in and maybe even, um, you know, taking clients because we kind of experienced after this fallout, I would say of, of people not working here anymore. Um, we experienced this influx of clients going, Oh my God, thank God this A, B and C person doesn't work here anymore. Cause I fucked up my hair. Exactly. <laughs> so, um, but they were too afraid to come back because they didn't want to like bump they into said person. Anything. Yeah. So, you know, like I said, all of it just turned out for the best. Um, that's ultimately kind of like why we were in this position. Um, and I don't know if you want to like interject or elaborate on anything if I missed something, but, um, you know, fast forward, we had lots of great success. Um, our salon was generating an astronomical amount of monthly revenue Mm -hmm. Um, we were growing, uh, we were adding new products. I was getting ready to remodel the space. I was getting ready to expand. I mean, there was lots of things that were kind of in motion because we were so successful it, as a salon. Yeah. Um, as so much so that our podcast actually took a back seat because we just didn't have the time for it. We were trying to play catch up with Mm -hmm. literally everything else that was going on here. Yeah. And we had to really focus on the growth of the salon because we were just growing so, so fast. Um, and in turn too, like even my personal business was growing exponentially that I couldn't put in the time to kind of baby the salon, if you will. So I kind of threw a lot of this responsibility on Yadira where it was just like, here, take this. <laughs> <laughs> so it was, it was, it was a lot going on, but we, we did, what we had to do, I think, for the time. I don't know where you want to start then. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> I, was like, I think that's a pretty good starting point. Um, yeah, I think it was just us being literally overwhelmed with how, I guess, how well everything was going. Yeah. And it's then, a, and it's then a, it's a being lot to blindsided process. at the end. Yeah, it's a lot to process. I mean, honestly, it's it's happened so quickly, even, you know, these changes that have occurred. But I guess fast forward to well, let's just go to October of last year, 2022. Let's just go right there. So, you know, our salon was doing great. Um, we were generating and just to kind of give you guys a, an idea um, for all the hairstylists and salon owners out there. Um I'm cool talking about numbers because I was very transparent about this before, um, even with the team, um, which I didn't have the right team on board to discuss these types of uh, numbers with people. But our salon was generating, um, you know, million dollar type seven figure revenues of, you know, for the year. And this is a type of growth that we had in. And we just, you know, yeah. Anyways. So we're a million dollar salon on the path to that and uh, growing exponentially. And then fast forward to October, um, there was just, again, didn't have the right team on board. And I think when you have, I think every salon experiences this, but there's always that stylist who is like your top producer, your top earner. Mm -hmm. And they're also the most toxic person. person on your team. Yeah. And I cannot stress this enough, but when you have someone who is toxic on your team, um, the best thing that you can do is just fucking cut the cord. Yes. Because that toxicity is much like a cancer it's that gonna just spread. It's going to spread. It's going to continue to grow. And that was my downfall 
I gave um, people a lot of benefit of the doubt opportunities. Um, my Achilles heel as a person and as a salon owner is that I like to give people chances. I always root for like the underdog. That's kind of why I'm like devil's advocate. Like, oh, let's like see what the other side side is yeah. like. I think uh, when I do that, I'm not allowing, I didn't allow my management team to do their job, which was tell me like, hey, this is what this is going not working. on, you know, because I allowed toxic people to continue to stay in my salon. And this is like really great, you know, salon owner, you're aspiring salon owner, you want to grow a team. Um, and, th- you know, this is all great information for you to kind of keep in your back pocket. And keep in mind, I've been in this industry over 20 years. I knew all of this shit and I still fucked it up. <laughs> <laughs> um, but for the better. Okay, let's just put that out there too. Um, I 100% don't regret anything that happened or what was said or anything at all or at the place that we're at today. But when you allow someone who's toxic and it does spread everywhere, uh, it causes everybody else around them to be toxic as well. Yeah. And it just created this really toxic environment. Um, so much so that I think it was definitely affecting like our clientele. Um, and there was just kind of no way to mitigate any of that. I mean, this got so bad that I had a, a, the worst team of people in my salon at one point that didn't even understand how their tips were fucking taxed. I mean, it was like so fucking silly. All of the little, little things, things that were being complained about and, I honestly just was like, this, this can't happen. Like we can't have this. Like, let's bring some clarity. Like I, I can't believe I need to play everybody's mother and be like, well, let's talk about taxes because that's kind of what it boiled down to, I think. Or one of, one of the things that yeah spawned from all of this was, yes. Yeah. So if you're a hairstylist, just know that if you have tips and they're put on credit card, they are taxed just like regular income. Um, And, you know, that was just kind of one of the things that was a a huge, I guess, complaint or something that was like being stirred within the team. That was just like festering for like the longest time. Yeah. And just like I shared with you, you know, the the fact that we were on the path to being this seven figure salon um, generating a million over a million dollars. These are numbers that, you know, I shared individually with the team. And I don't think that they had the um, emotional capacity, but the like. I don't even know what to call it. I guess the intelligence is the best word I can think of to understand the cost of doing business as a salon, even though the salon is generating a million dollars does not mean I'm swimming in a million dollars of, <laughs> of money at my house. You no. know, I, I think re- I, I, I live pretty humbly considering that, you know, I do have a lot of success even with my own business and with the salon. Um, I, I'm not one to, not flashy, not showy. Yeah. I'm not like a designer bag kind of person or like, I don't know. No, I'm just not that person. Um, I feel like I've always been that per that st- uh, a salon owner that is like, okay, we're generating this revenue. What can we do to make our place better? So our team can function and, and do better. better. Yeah. Always. It's always been like, Hey, like, what do you think we need? Like, what can we do? Like, yeah. What's the next great idea we can do? What's the, let's open up a podcast let's do online shop you know what I mean like what can we do to what can we provide to make things better yeah on both ends for our team and our our clients clients. um so there was just like lots lots of stupid ass toxicity um kind of stirring around mean girl behavior 100 percent um the amount of gossip that was in this space was like that was ridiculous and uncalled for (laughs) So as you can imagine, I mean, I can go on and on of of a lot of things, but as you can imagine, as a salon owner, um, I don't want that type of environment. I don't think anybody wants to work in that type of environment. And, you know, there was definitely some changes that need needed to be had. And there's just some behaviors that I just absolutely do not tolerate. Um, So, you know, I kind of got wind of um, somebody starting a mutiny. Yes. (laughs) Yes. <laughs> or attempting to start a mutiny. So when um, that information came from one of their besties in the space, I, 
Yeah. I mean, that's the reality. I'm going to say it for what it is. And and also during that time, too, when I found out about this mutiny, it was definitely a test of uh, who is loyal to my business and to their own business and to the salon. It was just like this was more or less, you know, this is the the issue I have a lot of times when I I see hairstylists that are, are... you know, want to work with their friends all the time. Like yeah. they leave a salon, they follow their friend and it's just silly to me. I don't understand why you're not looking at your own Self. career growth. Yeah. Like, why is it like, Oh, you work here. I want to work here too. I want to work together with my friend. Like it's, it's work, dude. Like we're here to make some money. And I just, I don't know. I don't, I'm not part of that mindset, I guess, but yeah, but yeah, uh, it doesn't make any sense. But when I got wind of this mutiny, um, I decided uh, to go ahead and expedite that shit because I was like, now's the time to basically cut out the cancer, like get rid of the people that no longer served my business um, to the to the level of service or experience that I was hoping for our clients to have. Yeah. It, it got so, um, so what's the word I'm looking for you, Dara? <laughs> yeah. I just, I mean, bottom line is I, I had to make some tough choices. Yes. Um, and so much so that I even think like you told me to like pump the brakes because I was ready to get rid of everybody <laughs> to In be completely honest. Swoop. <laughs> yeah. Um, so needless to say that literally every single person that no longer works here. And again, this is just an explanation to our clients because I do think that they deserve to kind of know why um, this business decision was made Um, because everything that I do for the salon is a business decision. I don't do anything on an emotional level whatsoever. Mm, This is for everything's the benefit of the the business for the team that's here and for our clients. Yeah. When these decisions were made, they were tough decisions. Um, But every single person that does not work here no longer, whether they left on my terms or their terms, were the ones that needed to leave anyways. Exactly. <laughs> they so were part of the toxicity. Exactly. Um, so yeah, and, and some lingered along for a little bit, um, but definitely there was lots of realignment and this all happened right before holiday. So if, you know, for salon managers or salon owners out there, you can imagine like the impact that that had, um, but that needed to happen Instead of after the fact. And and this is why, you know, when you when you learn that something is so toxic, don't think about, you know, the the money that could be made during that time, because do you, you, you like realize, right, like how much money our salon would have brought in that holiday season? Oh, yeah, for sure. But it wasn't worth it, it mentally. <laughs> no, it just wasn't. It was not. It needed to be done. And that's why I said when when I we learned about this, you know, mutiny. Mm-hmm. I keep saying that because that was literally that's the what word it was. was that was used. Um, how to expedite that shit. Let's get it going now. You don't want to fucking work here. Then go. Then go. And it's going to be today. So, um, cause I, I just don't play that shit because the bottom line is when you are trying to fuck with the business, you are also fucking with all the people that want to be here and want to grow here and want to excel in their career. And then you're also kind of indirectly in a, in a lot of ways trying to like fuck with my family and my, what I'm trying to build for my family. Yeah. So, you know, when it all boils down to it, you know, I am a small business And I feel like the team that we have here today, um, I'm very grateful for because they're the right people that are in the right seat now. And I'm going to now move forward and trust Yadira to (laughs) uh, do all of the hiring and firing and growth and and all of those things. And and that's just that. So um, I don't know what else to say. I think we covered all our bases. Yeah, I hope so. And I I hope that that is enough explanation and clarity for uh, our past and current and future clients of Rebel Femme. And hopefully that clears the air because we, yeah, like I feel like every time it's like, what happened? Yeah. It's like, oh, it's so quiet in here. Yeah. Um, But yeah, I think, you know, the bottom line is... um, and I think I said this to the team and, I, and I'll say it again. Um, this is going to sound super fucking arrogant, but if you are going into business, you need to be 100% okay not having not a fucking person in your business uh, working for you. 
And so if that means that I needed to, you know, shift what I'm doing personally in order for me to, for lack of a better phrase, eat crow for a while and come in here and, and help out the team. Cause now we're in a position where we have too many clients and not, not enough, enough hair stylists. So we're like right back where we were post pandemic. Pre, yeah, like, yeah. Right after we reopened our doors. Yeah. So, you know, right now we are looking for, uh, we've had several interviews um, with hairstylists, but we're looking for the right fit for us in yes. what we're looking for, for our clients right now. Um, so yeah, if you're, you know, if you've been getting your hair done and you've had a hard time getting in, um, fitting in, <laughs> that's, that's the honest to God reason, you know, why it's taken a minute. So, but I, I'm happy. I think we're on the, the right path for sure oh yeah this is much better like, like we can all breathe again right like coming into work is like fucking amazing and the other kind of cool part about all of this is that well, i was just talking to you about this um and danielle is a uh, that we're more profitable now yeah with like less team the smaller team that we have mm -hmm. small but mighty yeah so you know and i, I kind of I keep saying if you're a salon owner, because I think a lot of salon owners have or will experience something like this at some point. Um, but it just all boils down to knowing your numbers, making sure you have the right team on board and don't be afraid to, you know, get rid of the people that do not serve your business, even if they are a top producer. That's just really the bottom line. Make sure you have the right people in place and, you know, get people who want to have that sense of ownership who want to be in that place of management. Somebody like you, Dara, she's amazing. Thanks. <laughs> she does a lot of things and, um, you know, and trust your gut. We all have that intuition, you mm -hmm. know, <laughs> we do. We all have that intuition. And if you're like me and you like to give people chances over and over and over again, well, just don't fucking do it. Not worth it. Because it's, you know, this is, this is not like family where you're kind of like have to deal with it sometimes. <laughs> this is a business yeah. and when your money is affected, it affects everybody else too. So exactly. Anyways. And if you're watching this and you're like, holy fucking shit. <laughs> um, you want to learn more about our salon. Maybe you want to interview here. I don't know if you want to after you're listening to this <laughs> shit. Um, but, you know, you can send in your resume at <laughs> rebel info at rebelfem.com. No, hello. hello. Hello at rebelfem.com. Um, but yeah, I'm totally like happy with the team. We are, we're going to be shifting some things as well, which yes. I'm really excited about. Um, so on that note, we are getting ready to... Uh, launch a lot of media stuff um, on our YouTube page. So if you're watching this on YouTube, awesome. Hi, hello. Make sure you subscribe. <laughs> if you're listening to this, head on over to our YouTube channel. We're going to have lots of, you know, tutorials and um, we're just really shifting a lot of stuff more digitally because like this was just really eye opening for me. Yeah. I was like, I wanted to do all this digital shit a long time ago. But this was just like a driver. 100%. Because I just didn't have the right team. I had a bunch of people that thought I was trying to make them influencers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that was a, a reach in itself, but I, I mean, I love marketing and I love everything video and yeah, I think we just got the right team for it. And then we're going to expand on that part. Um, and I think too, as a hairstylist and in, in, in just the beauty space, there's a lot of money to be made in digital and in marketing. Mm -hmm. And this is kind of why, like I started might be on the chair. Yeah. Mastermind group. Um, so if you want to learn about that, put a little link in the bio for that. Um, <laughs> but I literally teach hairstylists how to make money and monetize work with brands and a whole bunch of other shit in that mastermind group, because I want to see other people win. I think there's space for all of us in the digital space. And I want rebel femme to be that space for not only people who are working here, but the people who are watching our videos just to feel empowered that we have a, a team of women who do digital shit, you know, like, I think that's kind of amazing. So anyways, it is amazing. And it's just funny that you're saying all that because it's, what is it? International women's month, women's history month. It is. Hopefully this comes out. I don't know if this is going to come out then. I don't know. Isn't there like a, a women's day too? Like in summertime? That's probably when this is going to come tomorrow. out. It's actually tomorrow. Oh, okay. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> whatever. But yeah, I, I'm all about like empowering, you know, women, especially in the beauty space, because regardless of what anybody's opinion is, this hair industry, just like many industries, is dominated by men. Um, there, Women do majority of the work, but men lead it. And I kind of want to shift that and change that. And I, I hope that, you know, I can be that example and our salon can be that example for other women in the beauty space. Yeah. So anyway, is there anything you want to add? No. No? No. You let me air out my dirty laundry? Yeah, I did. All right, cool. Well, this is, mine's the same as yours. <laughs> <laughs> in this regard, at least. Moral of story is don't be friends with people you work with. Not everybody's your fucking friend because your best friend will rat you out and yeah, <laughs> um, stay professional, bro. And if you, you want to quit gossiping. Yeah. And if you, Jeez. and if you don't want, you don't like something, talk Just leave. to, yeah, either oh. leave or talk to management. <laughs> use your mouth. Yeah. Use, your, use your words. I think that was the biggest one. Communication. They didn't know how to communicate. I just, yeah, they didn't know how to communicate. I don't think, I, I, I don't think a lot of people know how to communicate, even though the doors fucking open all the time to communicate and we had a plenty of communication channels to communicate. Oh yeah. And side note, um, my husband's, uh, we call him jokingly HR. Um, but we don't have an HR department. We also call him major back end. Like, come on. Yeah. <laughs> um, and so it's, it's not, uh, what's, what's that, what's that term called when you work with somebody that you are related to? I have no clue. Ah, I forget. It's a, definitely a corporate term, but, um, anyway, yeah, my husband, we call him HR just jokingly, but, uh, yeah, we, we're a small business. Me, I'm HR. <laughs> Hi. Hi. I'm also owner. <laughs> Hi. We wear all the hats. We wear all the fucking hats. So, um, yeah. And then on, I don't know, are you looking up the word? Yeah. Yeah. I know it's going to bug me because I, I know as soon as we stop recording this, I'm going to remember what the stupid word You're is. Like, ah. Yeah. It's like when you work with your relative, it's like you, when you like hire your relative, dude, I can't even remember. All right. I'm going to wrap this up while you keep yeah, looking. Yeah. It's not going to pop up anytime all right, soon. All right. <laughs> okay, cool. <laughs> so much for listening to the rebel fem podcast so before we go um make sure you leave us a review on your favorite tr- streaming platform apple Podcasts, spotify google play all the places that you're all of them and then make sure you follow us on instagram at rebel fem well where you're gonna find the breakdown of a lot of our episodes throughout the week um it's a great place for you to engage with us too we love we love instagram it's where a lot of our appointments come from yeah and you can see all the beautiful work our team does um and what else oh head to rebelfem.com you can book an appointment there online read our blogs that danielle writes she does such a great job on those she does and then um yeah you can listen to our podcast there too or even shop for your favorite products and i think that's kind of it yeah all right all right bye. bye